everyone, welcome back for another ICS Security Brief. I'm Dean Parsons, Certified SANS Instructor for ICS 515, Co-Author and Instructor for ICS 418. So today I want to talk a little bit about content regarding the ICS network traffic, specifically collecting data from the ICS control network. So there's some questions around where you can do collection. Of course, we've heard the verbiage before, north, south, and east and west from network architecture in IT. So we're going to explore exactly what that means for ICS. Now, specifically, the objective, either north-south traffic collection or east-west, the objective is, again, to prioritize safety of operations. So passive collection is what we're going to be focusing on. Now, the collection of the network data does vary in these different areas. But the ideal state is capturing ICS-specific protocol communications, which has functional codes, commands for the ICS at lower levels of the Purdue model, specifically interacting with engineering devices. This means at this level, having a solution to capture and dissect what's happening there, you do need an ICS aware intrusion detection system or something that understands and can dissect the ICS specific protocols. So specifically, and these are only a, a subset of the ICS protocols out there, the common ones are OPC, ICCP, Modbus TCP, DMP3, 104, Goose Protocol, and so on. Be sure to check your vendor documentation and your equipment deployed to make sure you're collecting and can dissect those specific protocols in your network. Now, we are making an assumption here, and the assumption is to be prepared for collection of data in the ICS network. You either have a tap in the environment to get data, or you have a span port on a fully managed switch that's configured, or you have both different parts of your network. So let's jump into the north-south versus the east-west traffic collection. Specifically, north-south in this case refers to a firewall that allows you to monitor the points of entry and exit where, where data is going outside of your level three firewall in this case or coming in. This is data crossing your boundaries or enforcement zones at that level three in the Purdue model, which is at your level three firewall. Now, there is some limitation with only collecting here. There is limited ability to look at the engineering protocols in the network. However, the best use case here for North-South is identifying possible adversary C2, command and control, outbound connectivity. Also, remote access can also be seen in this particular case, depending on the architecture. So there is value in definitely looking at the North-South traffic for those C2s of the adversary malware and or remote connections of a live human adversary in the network. Beyond that, of course, is also identifying cross-site traffic. Again, we're at the north-south collection point here at the level three firewall. So if you have multiple SCADA sites, then collecting data going to and from those sites at this firewall can be helpful. So there is some benefit there, but I will wager there's more benefit looking at the east-west traffic, specifically for ICS threat to detection. And even the benefits here are also from an engineering perspective and network troubleshooting perspective inside the control environment. So here we're talking about internal ICS network communications, communications to and from the human machine interface, OPC server, PLCs in the field, RTUs, and the things that are coming back from sensors at the low level to Purdue as well, such as level zero. Here, the benefits are, and the use cases are, understanding what ICS specific engineering assets are in, in the network and communicating which protocols are communicating on and the normal communication between those devices during normal operations of the engineering systems. Beyond that, another use case here is understanding if you can see lateral movement in the network. So an example would be an adversary getting inside the control environment, not coming through the north-south firewall, perhaps coming into a plant or some remote site via a transient device and plugging in. At this particular case, getting traffic from east-west, you will be able to detect that and understand if there's any setup of possibly an engineering workstation being compromised, which we've seen in the past, and then trying to make manipulation or control changes to the protocols, using the protocols in the ICS to the lower level devices, such as the controllers. So again, the benefit here, lateral movement, possible detection of manipulation of control devices at the lower level. Beyond that is, of course, vulnerability management. Collecting data passively in this area can understand what types of software is running it in this particular location. Also the hardware devices as well, which aligns with ingesting threat intelligence and understanding what vulnerabilities may exist in this particular case. 
Last but not least, I think this is the most beneficial with east-west traffic collection, is being able to baseline the ICS network collection at this time. So understanding what normal operations looks like is obviously key, and it obviously helps you understand the outlying types of events and anomalous activities at this level as well. So there you have it, north-south versus east-west collection. Both are definitely valuable. Uh, start somewhere, and, and hopefully you can get to using both east-west and north-south. That would be the ideal state. But the most beneficial would be east-west if you only had one option. So again, there are some limitations with north-south. And we see, again, the practical use cases for east-west, improved threat detection, improved engineering troubleshooting, and also things like asset identification and consistent monitoring of vulnerabilities in the ICS as well. So there you have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this ICS security brief. Again, my name is Dean Parsons, and I hope to see you in class soon.